Hi, I welcome you to this session on aircraft propulsion. In this session, we will be discussing about uh, the axial flow compressor. In the previous class, we understood different types of uh, compressors that are used for aircraft applications. In this class, uh, we will go in depth into the uh, axial flow compressor and see uh, how actually the compressor compresses the air. So, why we call it as axial flow compressor is because the air flows parallel to the rotational axis, which means if this is the axis system, the air flows parallel to the axis uh, of the engine. Right? So, that's why we call it as axial flow compressor. Air enters axially and exits axially. Unlike uh, the radial type of compressors, where air enters axially but exits in a radial direction. Now, the advantage of having an axial flow compressor for aircraft application is that it is uh, have the large mass flow capacity, right? But uh, even the efficiency is higher. The only drawback is the pressure rise in each stage. Now. Uh, this is a drawback in one sense, but advantage is in the other. Because the air doesn't change its direction uh, during the flow, during the compression process, the losses in the flow would be minimum. And hence, you can add multiple stages and get the higher pressure ratios when combined, uh, let's say 8, 10, 20 uh, stages of uh, compressor blades. So uh, this actually gives a, an advantage over a radial turbine where multi-staging is difficult. Multi-staging is not only difficult, but the efficiency in radial uh, compressor is very less. Hence, you can get a higher pressure ratio in axial flow compressor when multiple stages are combined. So for example, uh, the stage pressure rise is only 1.4. Uh, times the inlet pressure uh, whereas for centrifugal flow compressor or radial compressors uh, the pressure rise is 1 is to 4 means the pressure uh, air gets compressed four times in one stage right but uh, in axial flow compressor it compresses only uh, one fourth of it and slightly greater than the inlet pressure now as I said, the multi-staging, you can get up to uh, 40 times the inlet pressure. Now, this is a very good ad advantage uh, for aircraft applications where you need high pressure air uh, to expand in the turbine, right? So, now these AFCs are used specifically in uh, jet engines. There are other applications as well, but uh, majority application is in uh, the jet engines and also wind tunnels and sometimes air blowers and blast furnaces. So these are other applications of uh, axial flow compressors. Now it has a series of rotor blades. What constitutes uh, an axial flow compressor? So one compressor stage, it consists of a rotor stage which, where the rotor blades are connected to the shaft. If this is the shaft, now these all blades are connected to the rotor shaft. Now the next layer to the rotor is a stator. Stator are the blades which are attached to the envelope of the engine, uh, of the cowling, uh, right, engine cowling. So these blades doesn't move. So these are the stator blades, which are not movable, uh, but they help in converting the kinetic energy into the pressure energy. Now where you get the kinetic energy? This is where the rotor comes into picture. When rotor rotates, it converts the uh, incoming air's kinetic energy into a higher value. Now, as you see here, the velocity curve. In rotor, the velocity increases, you see. And then in stator, that increment in kinetic energy is converted into uh, the pressure rise. So Bernoulli's equation again, uh, you can recall the Bernoulli's equation relates uh, 
for a subsonic uh, incompressible flow velocity and pressure are inversely proportional right so when pressure increases velocity reduces or uh, the pressure rise happens due to the reduction in velocity so uh, at the end of the one stage the velocity return back to the initial value at which it enters the uh, compressor stage so what happens a quick uh, recap rotor blades increases the incoming kinetic energy you see the second stage it increases the kinetic energy and the stator converts that kinetic energy into the pressure energy right so this is a unique way of increasing the pressure um, by converting kinetic energy into the pressure energy now each pair of the rotor and stator is called as a stage so when i say multi staging it means pair of rotor and stator is being arranged one after the other there might be possibility that there are 20 stages 25 stages in today's uh, turbofan and turbojet engines so as you see here the inlet pressure let's assume it as one bar and when it exits uh, you can get the pressure ratios of up to let's say 40 but it, it's not so high for aircraft applications but uh, stationary applications definitely you may expect you know uh, higher uh, pressure at the exit now let's try to understand uh, the flow how it takes place in the rotor so this is a typical uh, configuration of an axial flow compressor where the first stage comprises of the inlet guide vanes now what are these inlet guide vanes uh, so they uh, actually provide a path to the incoming air to reach the rotor blades means the rotating rotor blades this will actually increase the efficiency of the incoming air or the kinetic energy associated with the incoming air so that is completely utilized by the rotor blades if inlet guide vanes are present so you can assume uh, the inlet guide vanes as the guide which guides the air to flow in a particular direction which will eventually improve the efficiency so incoming air uh, when it reaches the so incoming air when it reaches the rotor blade it will be in the axial direction but the because inlet guide vanes are arranged in such a way that if the rotor blades are rotating in this direction the air will catch up the rotor blades in the direction of its rotation so this is a very interesting way of uh, improving the energy absorbing capacity of the incoming air otherwise if uh, inlet guide vanes are not present the air will directly means axially hit the rotor blades and there will be some losses because uh, it is not in the direction of the rotation so uh, inlet guide vanes plays a very important role but not necessarily all the engines are equipped with inlet guide vanes so these inlet guide vane concept is uh, pretty recent and was not present in the early stages of development of jet engines okay so in older planes uh, older planes you may not find the inlet guide vanes but in all the recent aircrafts engines so you will definitely find the inlet guide vanes which help the air to fall in the direction of the rotation of the rotor blades so inlet guide vanes basically provides a path to the air to enter into the rotor right so then what rotor does rotor it actually accelerates the flow because it is um, getting the power from the turbine it accelerates the flow by rotating right so you can consider the cross section as airfoil cross section because anyway again i need uh, the change in the pressure between uh, one surface and the other surface so i chose the airfoil shape for the blade design to reduce the drag and increase the energy developed uh, by the blades so they rotor blades are arranged in such a way that when the air exits 
the rotor its kinetic energy will be increased now this kinetic energy is being converted into the pressure in stator stage so stator as the name itself tells it doesn't move it is a stationary set of blades which are arranged in a circular path along the engine cowl right so they uh, convert the high kinetic energy into the pressure rise right so that is the application of a rotor so the entire uh, three blades three rows of blades are considered as a stage now if i add another stage so you don't add the igvs because already the stator blades act like an inlet guide vein so next stage would be directly the rotor and stator so like this i can add multiple stages uh, up to 20 and 25 so that will definitely help to improve uh, the efficiency and pressure rise of the compressor so in the next uh, lecture we will discuss about the velocity triangles and the associated concepts of how to analyze the flow across an axial flow compressor